So in a situation where you have an HTTP REST API, I'm going to make a server here, and then I'm going to make a client here. So what's going on here is that a client is sending HTTP requests to the server. Uh, so it's always being the requester. The client requests the server and the server responds. So this client say, hey, can I get posts or whatever? And then the server sends the response back. And then this is like a JSON object. Maybe there's also a status code and some other stuff. So the data flow here is always request and response. Uh, but this WebSockets thing that we're going to do today is different. So the way that WebSockets work is that the client here has to initiate the connection to the server. So that's one thing that the client still has to do. This is not a request. This is just establishing a connection. So once the connection has been established, data can flow bidirectionally. That means that the server here can send data to the client. And this is not a request. This is just sending of data. So let's say that the server wants to send some data, then it wants to send some more data, then the client wants to send some data, so it can do that. It doesn't have to go in any particular pattern anymore. So this is a very unique property compared to HTTP. And one other thing you can do, let's say that you have uh, multiple clients. Here are three clients and they have all established connection with the server. So they say, here I am, this is uh, an open connection, and now data can start flowing between these clients and the server. Let's say that one of these says, oh, here's a message. And then the server says, okay, I'll just take all of these open connections that we have here, and then I'll just transmit some data back to all of these. So, you know, you don't have to just respond one client. Uh, so this is very unique compared to HTTP REST, and we're going to make a program with this right now. Okay, so before we start programming anything, we'll just check that we have everything that we need to get started. Uh, so we need .NET, and I'm going to just write .NET info to get all of the information about my local installation. Uh, I'm going to use .NET version 8. Uh, so ensure that you have version 8 or later, and preferably not the pre-release version, but the stable release version. Uh, and then, of course, the runtime in order to actually run the program. So I'm going to make an empty directory called uh, ws for websockets, cd ws, and then .net new sln to create a new solution file. Um, and then I'll just make an API right here. Uh, so .net new web API. And then you can add the web API to the solution. So .net sln add and then ws.csproj. And I'm going to use writer as my IDE. I have entered the send mode here, so that's why you don't see as much content. Uh, you can press Alt-1 to open the file system or solution explorer here. Uh, so we don't need this file. I'm just going to delete it. And then I'll open up uh, the program.cs file here. And I'll also delete a bunch of this stuff. Uh, you see some of it is things that you use exclusively for uh, making web APIs with HTTP. And I'm going to also delete this uh, and this. Um, I'll still use this. I'll just write build.run here. And then we have a very clean slate to start on here. So I'm going to open up uh, the NuGet package manager. And then I'm going to install a package called Fleck. So we're going to need something to build the WebSocket server. Uh, so just add this here to the project that you're working in. And I will collapse the file system because we'll just do everything inside of this one file. And I'll show line numbers. Okay, so now we also have a large text and we're ready to get started with writing the program. Uh, so we're going to make this WebSocket server here. So if you just write a new WebSocket server and if you have Flick correctly installed, uh, you get to write new WebSocket server, and here you need to specify an address that it listens on. So if you write Control Q here and you get the quick docs up, it will say string location. So just like an HTTP server is listening on some specific port on some specific host, uh, so does the WebSocket server. 
So if you write WS here, so this is instead of HTTP, right? And you just write 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 uh, 8181. You can also write localhost uh, if you want to. Um, but I, I prefer this to listen on all possible network interfaces. Um, I'm going to write var server here just to give this a variable. And then in order to start the WebSocket server, you just write server.start. And then the start methods requires an action. And they call this a config. So we need to tell the WebSocket server how to behave. If you write control space here, and uh, we can just fill out this with an action, make a scope here, and then you can take this connection here. This represents a WebSocket connection. So I'm gonna just write WS, um, WS, and then we have some methods. So every single time you have a message coming into the WebSocket server, we can use this on message here. So uh, we're going to make an action equals a message. And then we do like this. Uh, end of statement here. And I'm going to just uh, start out by just uh, logging this to the console. Uh, so log the message to the console. And that means if we run this now, pull up terminal. Um, I'm going to run this with .NET Watch. If doesn't always work 100% at the time, but uh, we'll cross our fingers, right? And uh, now we're going to use a WebSocket client. And uh, luckily, most people, they already have Postman installed. And uh, what you do here in Postman is you go into New, and then you select WebSocket. Don't select Socket.io. This is a particular type of WebSocket. We're just using generic WebSockets, such that we can use any WebSocket client. Um, and now when you have this WebSocket interface here, you can just start sending requests to localhost. But the way it works is that you have to connect first. So you write connect here, and now we are connected to our server. Um, and we can start sending some messages. So I'll just uh, make this slightly larger. And here, this is where we write our message. Notice that it doesn't say JSON or anything. It just says message. If I write hey here, and I press send, you can see here down in the logs of my .NET API that it says, hey, and I can do this as many times as I want. Um, also, if you open up this here, you can see all the traffic going back and forth. This means that it is sending to the server, but we're not actually receiving anything from the server. We're just logging to the console. We can also send something back. The way we do that is we use the WebSocket variable that we defined here. And then we just write send and send just takes in a string. So you could like echo whatever we had. So you just wrote and then take whatever message we had there. Um, message. And, uh, and it says, hey, do you want to reload? Yeah, I want to reload. Connect, send and now the moment of truth is we have successfully anchored this and now we're going to get into some of the cool stuff about the bi-directional data flow because the bi-directional data flow means that we don't have to just send one thing and return another thing like hypothetically in here let's say that you had a loop and you said while true and then you do console.read key uh, and then you do WebSocket send, hey. So now we send our first uh, message here, and we open up here, and then we just start pressing some keys, right? And then we go back in here, and then we can see all of this data that we're getting from the server. This is just for every single time that I press a key, it sends something to the client. Um, so now we, we have successfully proven that we can have bi-directional data flow. You don't even need to send a message uh, first because you could just use uh, the action called WS unopened and then make an action here. Uh, we'll do like this, open a scope, and then you could just take your code here and put it in there so that it starts listening for keystrokes every single time that you just open any WebSocket connection. But we're going to do something more with this message thing here. Uh, so. Just up here, I want to make a list here, var ws connections, uh, and then new list of 
iWeb socket connection. And then on open here, what I'm going to do is I want to say WS connections uh, dot ads and then the web socket here. And then on message here, I'm just going to go through all of the connections that I have accumulated and then just message all of them. So I want to say WS connections. I think I misspelled that uh, for each. Uh, and then I'll just write uh, WebSocket connection dot send um, and then whatever message that someone sent. So I'm going to just demonstrate this here from Postman. And then afterwards, we'll make a little program that is a front end for this very simple WebSocket server. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'm going to make this uh, a little larger because we really need some real estate now. And so let's say we have one client here. I'm going to just duplicate this one client. Uh, we call this uh, client two. Uh, so imagine um, these are inside of uh, a chat room together. And I have some other stuff laying around here. Um, so both of these, they are connected to the same room here. And then this one client says, how do you do? And it sends here. So we see we're sending the data. And we're also getting the data back, right? So uh, we're also getting our own data back. And then this person says, ah, oh, I get how do you do? And then we're, we're saying, okay, uh, I'm doing good. Um, and then the other client here gets, I'm doing good. And so it's working. That's bi-directional data flow. And there's a one-to-many connection between the clients. So this, this is already amazing, right? We're going to make a front end for this stuff now. Okay, so I have an open terminal here and we'll just make a, a very small front end application. And I'm going to use Angular for this, but you could hypothetically use any framework or no framework at all. So ng new. And then it says, hey, what name do you want? I'll just use front end uh, like this. And then it asks you all of these questions. Uh, I'll just take a CSS and I'll say no to this. And now it's going to build it. So inside of the front end directory, I'll just install a, a package called WS. All right, so uh, I'm just going to delete all of the HTML contents of the app component, and then we'll just build the program inside of this app component.ts. Uh, so I'm going to make an array of strings that just represent the messages. So I'm going to write messages, which is string array initialized as an empty array. And now I'm going to make a WebSocket connection here representing this client's connection. So WebSocket, I'm just going to write WS of type WebSocket. And here, just open up the quick docs here with Control Q to see that you're picking the correct type. So I'm going to just write new WebSocket. And now this WebSocket here needs to know the address of the WebSocket server. So we're just going to write WS and then localhost uh, and i assigned 8181 and then um i'm gonna make a constructor here and then the constructor here now inside of this constructor i'm gonna decide what's gonna happen with this web socket connection here so just like inside of our .NET application we have some methods so we also have an on message here so on message equals message and then just make a method here so you can of course transform this to a named function if you want to um, but I, I prefer this syntax here so i'm going to just say this messages uh, and then just uh, add it's called push in javascript and then just write message dot Data. So there's, of course, a lot of um, metadata about the message, but we don't really care about that right now. And now I'm also going to make a, a method for just sending a message. So uh, I'll just make a, an input element here, input, and then I'll make a button. Uh, and then I'll make a click event here, uh, send message. And then I will also 
make a way of handling the input from the input fields. So I'll make a form control message content. I'll just make field here, import the form control and actually I'll just write a new form control with an empty array like this. And I'll go line down so my head doesn't get in the way. And in here, make the uh, send message method. Um, and then you just write this WS send. And then you take the message content from this form control here. This form control, and we called it message content dot value. Um, and right now, this message content dot value might also end up being a null. That's why it's saying, ah, maybe there's something wrong. Uh, by putting this exclamation mark, you say, trust me, it is a message. Um, so we're now sending this message here to the WebSocket server. And when the WebSocket server gets messages, I'll just go back to program.cs. Uh, remember, it's just broadcasting out to all of the open connections. Uh, so we're going to run this now with ng serve. And uh, since uh, Angular 17 uses Beat, it takes almost no time to uh, load up the application. So all of the data transmissions back and forth between the client and the server when you're dealing with web sockets inside of your dev tools, they will all appear under the same connection. So here I have the connection open with localhost port 8181. And here I have the input field that I can write something into. And there is a very, very, very small button that I didn't put text into. If I click this one now, you can see here that I'm sending data and I'm getting data back from the server. And that's amazing because that means I can open up a, a new local host port 4200 here. And here I have another a user. And this other user here, if they start writing something, right? Then this browser window here gets all that data that this other browser window is writing. So right now we're not actually adding it to the user interface, but we can do that really quickly. So let's just go back into uh, the app component.cs and inside of app component.cs, we go into the uh, HTML here. And uh, now we can just uh, put in all the messages, messages as a JSON. So real quick like this, open up here again. And right now it's just an empty array. Put something in, uh, click the almost invisible button. And you see both browsers, they, they get this data here. But like you could also uh, take uh, Postman, for instance. You know, Postman is connecting to the same server. Click connect here and uh, open up here. Click send message. And now we get all these, how do you do? And you know, vice versa. If you do something like this and right FFFF, you also get the FFFF in here. So we have one to many communication and we have bi-directional data flow between all of the clients and the server. And the first time you see this, it's almost like magic, right? And it just opens up a well of new possibilities for us. So we're going to be making a lot of great stuff with this web sockets.